Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 408. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about something that popped into my head as an idea last Sunday when I was out on a run. I was just running on this trail, and all of a sudden, this phrase came into my head, start from where you are. And I actually paused my run and sent myself a note with these words because I didn't want to forget it and I knew it was something that I wanted to talk about on the podcast this week. So when I got home and I googled it, I found that this is actually a quote by Arthur Ashe, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And this is exactly the concept I had in mind when the phrase popped into my head. So here's an episode on the topic. In outdoors adventures as in life, start from where you are accept where you are, appreciate where you are. Start with who you are, start with what you have, start with how, start with your why, and start now. So let's get started. Start with where you are, or start from where you are, is an important concept because I think a lot of times, both in outdoor adventures and sports and life stuff and business stuff and goals and things, I think a lot of times I, myself at least, am so focused on where I want to be and so frustrated that I'm not there yet because things aren't moving as fast as I want them to. I tend to get really frustrated with where I am. And I think, thankfully, that hasn't stopped me from doing things, but I think it does stop a lot of people from doing things. I think a lot of people get kind of paralyzed and frozen and stuck because they're not where they want to be and they don't like where they are. And so they just don't do anything. And this is very counterproductive because all we can do is start from where we are. And I was reminded of last year when I was feeling unwell from Lyme disease over the summer and I had no energy and I could barely make my way up my stairs in my house without huffing and puffing. And and so I wasn't exercising. I wasn't walking. I wasn't running. I was just kind of resting and doing the bare minimum. And that was when my husband and I started watching these documentaries and YouTube videos about ultra runners and outdoor adventures, like big outdoor adventures. And that was when I was feeling kind of sorry for myself because I wasn't feeling well and I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. And it was the middle of summer when the weather was gorgeous. And I was just really frustrated with where I was and dreaming about these amazing things that these people were doing and thinking, oh, well, they can do all these amazing things, but I can't. And I wish I could run an ultra, but I don't think I can. And if I had let myself stick with that and not follow my dream because I thought couldn't do those things, then I never would have run longer distances. I never would have got to where I am today, which is already running ultras a few months later. It's what, May? Ran a marathon length run in February. And in March and April, I ran 50 kilometers and then 55 kilometers. And both of those are ultras. So I never would have gotten to here if I hadn't started from where I was. And by starting from where I was, you know, I started from zero. I wasn't doing anything. And then once I felt well enough to get back into exercise, I just started running half an hour, which is kind of my bare minimum. And, or was my bare minimum. Now an hour is kind of my bare minimum. I rarely run less than an hour now. That's a huge shift. So start from where I was, which was zero, then 30 minutes. And then I just increased from there. And little by little, I increased my distances. And week by week, I was running longer distances. And then I got to where I am today. But I had to start from where I was, which at the time was zero. No time, no minutes, no running. And in doing that, I had to accept where I was. 
don't wish you were somewhere else because that won't get you anywhere. Use that wish of, oh, I wish I were there rather than here. I wish I were running ultras or I wish I were making this amount of money in my business or I wish I were doing this in my life. Use that dream to get clear on where you want to be, but accept where you are. Because if you don't accept where you are, then you're going to block yourself from getting started and you're going to delude yourself into creating a viable plan to get to where you want to be. And appreciate where you are. And I think this is a really hard one for me because I do still sometimes, much less than I used to, but sometimes compare myself to others. And that's really unproductive because you don't know the other person's backstory. You don't know how they got to where they are. You don't know what they did to get to where they are. You don't know where they started. Like comparing yourself to others. I have a whole podcast episode on this, which I'll link to in the show notes, but it's just self-defeating. So appreciate where you are. I mean, when I went from zero to 30 minutes of running, I could do 30 minutes of running. Like that was doable. Some people can't do that. Some people can't run at all. Some people can't run more than 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I mean, when I very first started running back in my late 20s, I could barely run a couple of minutes at a time. I was so out of shape. I weighed less than I do now, but like my physical fitness was terrible. So appreciate where you are. Like, even if you can just run two minutes or five minutes or whatever it is that you do, appreciate that. That's better than nothing. And if you're starting from nothing, at least you're alive and you can start from somewhere. So appreciate where you are, accept where you are, and then start from where you are. And I think it's also important to start with who you are. And again, accept and appreciate who you are. So, you know, I started with a really bad sports mindset. I had so many limiting beliefs, which I've talked about here before. So many limiting beliefs, a lot of them from early childhood, a lot of them from my very first marathon that I ran 18 years ago that I DNF'd. I had so many terrible limiting beliefs that were created that made me think, you know, I'm not good enough. My body isn't good enough to do these things. I'm not sporty. I'm just not good. So I had this really bad sports mindset, but I got started anyway. I started with who I was. And then I worked on it. I upgraded my mindset. I worked with Jane Talbot, who was a guest on this podcast. She's an NLP practitioner. Weirdly, I was never a big fan of NLP, despite having trained in it and being an NLP practitioner. I never actually used that with clients. I never really resonated with NLP, but something about Jane and the way she works with it was super effective for me. And I got so much out of working with her. And I only had a few sessions with her. And it wasn't even regular sessions. It was like kind of on an as-needed basis. But it absolutely changed my mindset. I mean, I went on that day that I had the marathon run wanting to quit to the following month when I ran the 50 kilometers, never once thinking about quitting. It was massively life-changing for me and mindset-changing for me. So start with who you are. Even if your mindset is crap, even if you have limiting beliefs, even if you don't think you're good enough, because all you can do is start with who you are now and do the work on your mindset with yourself or with someone else if you need to. And pay attention to your mindset as you go along, because I think when we embark on these journeys of adventure, of setting goals for ourselves in sports and outdoors adventures in life, limiting beliefs come up. So pay attention, like any time your mind gremlins say, oh, you're not good enough to do that. Oh, you could never do that. Pay attention to that stuff, write it down, and then do the work on it. Because as you grow and as you do more things and have bigger and bigger adventures, more stuff is going to keep coming up. Next, start with what you have. Don't feel like you need professional kit. Start with basic gear. When I first started running, I didn't have great running shoes. They were okay, but I have much better shoes now. I had a running vest, which was cheap and not comfortable. And I didn't know any better, but I didn't need any better at the time because I was just getting started and I really didn't know how far I was going to go with this running. I started with cheap stuff. And then once I got going and once I started running longer distances and once I started learning about my needs, 
and watching the stuff that my husband was buying because he was more advanced than I was, I started little by little upgrading my stuff. So I bought better shoes. I bought a better running vest, and that was a massive upgrade for me. I bought better sports bras. I started little by little upgrading my stuff, and there's still stuff I want to upgrade. I just got a new running watch as a very early birthday gift, because my birthday is in July, so it's quite early, but it's been absolutely changing from my experience. Like I now have like heart rate chest strap, which links to my watch. And it's helping me see more data about my runs, which is helping me kind of learn how I can improve things. And the reason why I got this super early birthday present now is because I've got my first ultra, which is 100k, the first weekend in July, and that's before my birthday. So I got this now to start improving my training. But I started out with a Fitbit, and it was fine. You could start out with nothing, just a regular watch or your phone. Like, it's fine. Like, start with what you've got and then upgrade little by little. Don't think you need to spend a ton of money to get started. You absolutely do not. I mean, with my hiking stuff, the same thing. I started out with the basics and little by little, once I could afford better stuff, once I needed better stuff, once I learned what would be useful to upgrade, I started upgrading. And I've done that little by little by little. I haven't gone out and bought tons of stuff in one month. So start with what you have and start with the basics. Next, start now. So if you have a dream, take the first step. Don't wait until things are perfect because things are never going to be perfect. So, you know, last year as I was just coming out of Lyme disease, I was feeling really Uh, not great. You know, I'd been, had really low energy for a few weeks. I had had three weeks of nausea from taking the antibiotics. Like I didn't feel great, but I had this weird dream of running ultras and it made no sense. And it made no sense to, well, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I guess it did make sense because you've got to start somewhere. So it made no sense at the time to me to go from zero to ultra But you don't go from zero to ultra in a month. You know, it's taken me from August to March, taken me a few months. So start with now. Start from now. If you have a dream, take the first step now because things are never going to be perfect. I mean, I'm super busy. Things are always happening. Like I've always got my calendar full of stuff. There was never a perfect time to fit really long runs into my calendar, but I did because it was important to me. So start now. And start with your why. And I have a whole episode 382, which I'll link to in the show notes about knowing your why for your outdoors adventures. And that's something that's really important. I think it's something that's been really, really useful for me is knowing why I'm doing these things I'm doing, especially when it gets hard, especially when I'm running and it hurts, or I'm tired, or I just feel like quitting. Knowing why I'm doing this makes all the difference. So know why you're doing it. Know why you have this dream. What do you think this dream is going to give you? What are these goals going to give you once you achieve them? And probably achieving your goals or starting on the path to your goals, it's probably going to give you so much more than you can even imagine right now. But just think about why are you doing what you're doing? Why want to do these things? And then start with how. So start taking those steps from where you are to where you want to be. Make a plan. I had a very haphazard plan with my running. It is a miracle that I've gotten to where I am. I was only running, I think, three days a week, and I had two shorter runs and one longer run, and that longer run I just increased by 10% each week, and did that week by week until I got to where I am now. So make a plan. Write down the steps. I have written down the steps and rewritten the steps and replanned my plan so many times because it's changing as I go. I've been simultaneously training for long hikes and long runs, and I've adjusted that as I've gone. And if it feels overwhelming, break it down into even smaller steps or change your deadline or your timeline. So I did something a bit silly. I had a 50 kilometer race in April that got canceled. That was doable. And I have a 100K race in September, which is doable. 
But then I was invited to do a race in the first week of July. And that's a bit of a stretch. So it's really made me step up my training because I said yes to something that it was a stretch. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. It's a beautiful trail. It's a, I've never done it before. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the terrain. My husband signed up for the race as well. So we're going to do it maybe together and we'll see how it goes, but it's definitely a stretch. And there's so many reasons why I shouldn't do it, because it's too soon, because the cutoff time is a bit tight, i do not sure if I can make it, because it's during the summer, and I have said time and time again that I do not do long-distance trails in the summer, and here I am, going to do all these things. So, you know, that was my decision, and it was a stretch. So sometimes, if it feels overwhelming, that's, well... I don't want to say good, but sometimes it's because it's a stretch and you need to reevaluate your plan to get to this stretch goal. But again, if it feels too overwhelming, break down the steps or change your deadline or timeline. You know, if I were truly overwhelmed, I could cancel this event and just go straight to September and do my race in September, which feels super comfortable. But I've reorganized my plan and I think I can do it. So we shall see. You'll learn more about it in July. And get it in the calendar. Time block it. I know I talk about time blocking all the time, but my training is all in my calendar because if I didn't put it in my calendar, I wouldn't get it done, especially with the longer runs because they take obviously more time and it's more time out of my work day and more time out of my relaxation day. So I absolutely have to block this time out in my calendar to make sure that it gets done. It's like today, uh, my husband and I are going out and he's going to help me doing sprints to try to figure out my maximum heart rate. Because now that I have my super watch, I need to know what my maximum heart rate is so I can adjust the settings. I'm really not looking forward to this, but it's something that I've got to do if I want to get the data correct and I'm going to get help with it. So that's going to make it easier. And here we are but I'm doing it because I blocked it out in the calendar. And tomorrow I've got a long run, which I've had to block out in the calendar and rearrange all my other stuff around it. So again, obviously you need to manage your life according to your own personal priorities. But if this goal, whatever it is, is a priority for you, block it out in the calendar and make sure that it happens. Especially with training for a big event, I absolutely have to plan it well in advance. Like, from now through to the date, because if I don't, I just don't have the time in my calendar. You know, other stuff happens, life happens, stuff happens, it calendar fills up. But if I plan in advance, I get the training into the calendar, then I make sure it happens. It has to happen because it's in the calendar. So to recap, start from where you are. And again, this doesn't just go for outdoor adventures and sports. It also goes for life. Start from where you are. Accept where you are. Appreciate where you are. Start with who you are today, because that's enough, and upgrade your mindset if needed. Start with what you have. You don't need pro gear today. You can upgrade. Start now. Start with the first step, no matter how tiny, because time is never going to be perfect. Start with your why. Know your why for your outdoor adventures, your sports goals, your life goals your business goals, and start with how. Make a plan and then time block the plan into your calendar and take the steps. And again, adjust as you go. I'm all about pivoting and adjusting and changing as you go along because the plan that you make from day one will probably have to be adjusted for various reasons. So hope you found this useful. I would love to hear from you and see what your plans are, what your goals are for either your outdoor adventures or whatever. Whatever it is that you can start from here, start from where you are. Please drop me a line and let me know what you think or what you're planning. Um, My email is holly at hollywharton.com or you can find me online and get in touch there. Also wanted to remind you to keep an eye out for later this month. May 28th to 31st, doing a free ebook promo with a five other authors who have hiking books and adventure books, and we're all giving our books away for free as part of this promo. I am super excited about this. You will recognize some of these authors as we did a giveaway last year, some of us, 
but we've got some new authors in the mix. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. So wherever you are in the world, if you're in lockdown or coming out of lockdown or stuck and you haven't traveled in a long time, these books will be the perfect solution for an armchair adventure because you can read these books from wherever you are right now. So I hope you keep an eye out for that. Again, it's May 28th to 31st. I will be publishing a post on my blog. I'll be sharing about it on social media. One of the authors is Keith Foskett or Fozzy, who was a guest on the show last week in episode 407. And he's giving away one of his books. I've really, really enjoyed his books on uh, long distance walking in Spain and in the United States. He's got some really great books. And you will also recognize Susan Jagannath, who has been on the show twice, and she's giving away one of her books. Anyway, I'm super excited. And I hope that I can get some of the other authors on this podcast. They've all been invited, but they're all super busy this month. So it might be before the promotion, it might be later on, but there's a couple of them that I've been wanting to talk to for ages and get them on the show for you. So that's all about that. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. It would really mean the world to me. Next week's episode, I think, will be with the fabulous Sunit Kaur. She's in the calendar. We are going to talk about all kinds of plant spirit and land things. And I'm super excited to have her back on the show as well. So remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 408 for the show notes on this episode. And also, if you have any ideas for people you'd like to see on the show or topics you want me to cover, please let me know. Again, that's holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. Thank you so much and have a great week. Happy trails. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.